What's up guys? I bought a snowmobile. This sled does not currently run. I paid $650 for it and I know nothing about snowmobiles whatsoever. It's a sport that I've long debated getting into and just haven't pulled the trigger on and I'm going into yet another winter in Montana. I think this will be my eighth year here and I thought, I keep saying I'm gonna do it eventually, what am I waiting for? So I thought back to how I started flipping dirt bikes and how I bought a thousand dollar KX125 that I knew nothing about. And now just three years later, I'm doing frame up dirt bike builds. So I figured if I can fix a dirt bike, I can fix a sled. This is a 2007 Skidoo Summit 800. So we're gonna pop this girl open and see if we can figure it out. If anybody needs this as a little motivation to try something new, again, I know literally nothing about snowmobiles and I am going to put a top end in this thing. Maybe I shouldn't speak until I get it running, but chances are after seeing this video, the sled's running. I also wanna get this thing up and running sooner rather than later, because it has been nuking here. I mean, look at that table. That's a lot of snow. Well, here goes, I suppose. So I'm going to try and familiarize myself the best I can. This is the clutch, not sure how it works. We've got our cylinders right here, air box, which I imagine will have to come out, and the carburetors are tucked under there. And of course, this big, beautiful, mm, slightly rusty two-stroke pipe is gonna need to come out. What's that? Oh, that'll get the knuckles. And I think this is gonna need to come off. It looks like it's actually toolless. Little tab right there. All right. Now I wonder if this air box can come out with the clutch here or not. We're gonna need to put an extra long one in there. All right, clamps are loose. There's also a sensor here on top of the air box, it looks like. You know, we have the whole standard versus metric discussion. Everyone knows metrics better. Well, I wish these clips had one standard design. All right, let's see if this air box is gonna go. Ooh, she popped right out, at least on one side. Will that squeeze through there? That would be awfully convenient. Oh, wow, would you look at that? This is my first time ever working on a sled, but just based on pulling that air box, so far I like Skidoo. We'll see if I'm saying that in a couple hours. So I actually think my next step from the reading I've done is gonna be to drain the coolant. And it looks like the reservoir is right there. If you know these sleds, please correct me if I'm wrong, but from everything I read online, there is no coolant drain. It's possible to drain it by pulling a hose at the bottom of the motor, but it looks like it'd be a total pain. And the other option is to siphon it out. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. This oil was in the bucket before, but the stuff floating in the coolant was not. There was some nasty stuff in there. All right, I think next is probably the pipe. It'll clear up a little bit of space for me to get to the front end here. And then from there, we can figure out those carburetors. Handy dandy spring puller. This job wouldn't be any fun without this. Couple more springs than a dirt bike header. Oops, that spring's gone forever. That's like dropping something next to the seat in your vehicle. It's never, oh, that one's gone too. Just kidding, that's what magnets are for. Although I actually still can't find the other one. It looks like a few mystery items in there, but none of them seem to be my spring. Maybe I'll keep peeking after I pull the pipe. All right. What's that? Oh, no way. No way, it's a 10 mil. It's a 10 millimeter. Oh my gosh, to the guy I bought this sled from, I found your 10 mil, dude. It was in the sled, bro, you forgot it in there. No way, I literally can't believe that's a 10 mil with all the memes and everything else. It was right there, bro, that's where he left your 10 mil. That is too funny. Okay, I was able to spot the missing spring with the flashlight and it is way down there, so we're gonna approach it from a different angle here. Oh yeah, all right. All the springs are accounted for, plus a 10 millimeter. All right, I think next up might be this exhaust manifold, which doesn't look like the easiest thing to get to. My set of Allens is not the most diverse, but I might be able to get to it with the impact and a socket on a wobble, so see what we can do. Nice, very nice. 
We might be able to get this bottom one too. Heck yeah. Well, I think I just removed the easiest two of those eight bolts, so I'll see you guys when I have six more done. Oh, uh, just found some more stuff in the engine compartment. Probably shouldn't be there. Huh, that's a similar looking shape, interesting. So this became a game of work smarter, not harder. And that is eight bolts, but this thing is still tight as can be. Turns out I can't count and there's still one left. I might need to replace this last bolt because I'm kind of stripping it, but we're out. We're out, baby. Exhaust manifold off. There it is. Still pretty dark in this engine compartment, but I did some big brain moves. I don't yet have a son to yell at while I tell him to hold the flashlight. So I just hooked my flashlight right through there and we've got a little more light in here for now. It would appear I have a giant mess of cables and electronics to figure out to get these carburetors off. Ow. Oh. Some sort of unidentified sensor. Oh! Oh, you know when you slice under your nail bed? Ooh, that one was unpleasant. <sighs> All right, we're getting somewhere. My worry is I don't know where coolant flows on this sled. Hopefully there's not much in there because I drained the reservoir. I think this one might be coolant too from the carbs, but I have no idea how that works, so we'll see. How does somebody even put a hose clamp on at that angle? Making my job tricky here. There we go. Well, we're gonna see if there's coolant running out of this thing or not. So just confirm that that is a coolant line. We're getting there one disconnect at a time. I wonder if I'm gonna remember where to put any of this stuff. Honestly, I've actually looked at footage a lot on dirt bike engine builds to make sure that I place washers and things correctly. Uh, when you're like sitting in bed at night, like, oh my gosh, did I remember that piece? Hello. Hey. Keep forgetting. What are you busy right now? Uh, kinda. Like working at something? Yeah. Okay, just let me tell you this. Oh, mother f Oh, I promised I wouldn't swear during this project. I told myself I'm gonna have fun with it, and I'm gonna learn, and I am doing that. But I also feel the need to swear a little bit, cause this clamp <laughs> sake, it won't come off. Come on. Oh, let's go. We got it. What I'm doing right now is removing the throttle cables. I knew filming a snowmobile was gonna be a little tricky, but you wanna know a sad little secret? I'm not sure I should tell you. I film almost everything with a GoPro. I know, I know, I know. I need to improve my camera game so I can get some dope shots of the inside of this snowmobile. But I don't even know what I'm looking at on this snowmobile is the problem. Oh, okay, there's one. You missed, all right, we got it. Oh, I might drop this screw into the abyss. Oh, we got it. It would appear there's one more connection. And of course it's electrical. There's zero chance I'm gonna be able to poke this camera into that dark abyss to show you my sad little fingers trying to get this connector off. So we'll just resume in 20 minutes when I have this thing apart. Oh yeah, baby. Carburetors out. Looking at the clearance here with the frame, I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove these first. So that's what snowmobile reeds look like. Pretty much look like dirt bike reeds. So I've been tediously turning these head bolts and completely forgot I had this. Nice and easy, happy. Yet another unexpected electrical connector and a coolant line. Coolant line and electrical connector successfully uh, navigated. Head should go now. Yeah, baby. Let's see if we can get any more coolant out of here. We got it. That's probably not a great sign in the crankcase, is it? All right, both pistons are out. Well, I have successfully torn apart the top end of this sled. Getting it apart wasn't awful. 
Getting it back together is definitely gonna be pretty tricky. That said, I don't really see anything too concerning in the cranks. No up and down play, bearings feel okay. The pistons do have some scoring, nothing that I think is absurd, but again, I'm not really familiar with what's standard on sleds. I think the cylinders look okay as well, not perfect, but just based on what I would be willing to run in a dirt bike, they look okay. So I think at this point, I'm just gonna move forward with the plan to put a top end in it and put it back together and see if it goes. I also realized while the carburetors are on the bench, I might as well clean those. And I will tear these apart and rebuild these rave valves to see how these work. Part of me is really curious because with dirt bikes, pretty much all the power valves are controlled by an actuator that opens a spring at a certain RPM from the bottom end, but these aren't attached to anything. So it'll be interesting to see how those work. Top end kit should be here tomorrow. So we'll keep working away on that. Well guys, I think further progress on the sled is going to be in a part two. So if you enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss any new content. I'll be making more progress on the YZ build soon as well. If there are any big snowmobilers watching this video who have any suggestions for what I've done or what else I should look into on this sled, I am all ears because like I said, today was my first day ever working on a snowmobile. But yeah guys, I bought a snowmobile. That was, that was a problem. I didn't that one too. <laughs> well, we'll see what I find. Yeah. Hey, at least there's spark. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad I don't have to solve that problem.